I appreciate you calling in. Last last we spoke, you were beginning to feel the sensation of a special season in uh, New Orleans, uh, and it's the first 10-win season since uh, 2013, your third year in the league. Uh, do you f- still feel the same way about this team right now? Yeah, uh, I feel that we, we control our own destiny this year. Uh, we talk about being able to win our division um, you know, over the next two weeks. This is something you have to keep in mind, but at the same time, we've got a heck of a game coming up this Sunday, and that's where all our focus is. Okay. Now, what happened between these two teams the last time? Was there any bad blood, essentially, out there, Cameron? Uh, sure. You know, we talk about a, a, a team that you face every year, a team that you face twice every year. Um, you know, you wish that you – could win all of those games but at the end of the day you know they know they know us they know what we're going to do as we know them um and we didn't do enough of what we didn't execute enough of what we needed to do to complete to get the win now uh, asking about bulletin board material i'm usually loath to do that to be honest with you cameron and you being a cal guy i know what you you know what i mean by when i say that that you know i'm i'm loath to do it because that implies that you wouldn't play your hardest in, in, in a game that means so much. That said, as my caveat to the question, seeing what uh, Devontae Freeman tweeted out, ain'ts after the game and going at it with your coach, is that something that's going to be discussed in your in your locker room this week? Not at all. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we know that we didn't play the best game that we should have to be able to take over that game. Um, when you talk about what Devontae Freeman tweeted out and then retracted, um, I put that in the spoils of war category. Um, and what honestly was going to fuel me is more so is being able to get after Matt Ryan, being able to harass him and, uh, you know, uh, really putting it on defense to win this game. So I'm like, super excited to focus all of our time now on watching film and breaking down Matt Ryan and Devontae Freeman and Coleman and, uh, putting locks on the receiver core and really getting after their entire offense. So, you know, we'd love to turn around and say, hey, this is the this is where we clinched our division or, you know, even though we do have camp the following week after that. Well, we still live in the uh, past for just a little bit a uh, while longer with Cameron Jordan of the New Orleans Saints here on the Rich Eisen Show. I had Steve Smith on the show the day after that that Thursday nighter and asked him about Sean Payton getting that flag at the end, which essentially – wrap the game up for Atlanta and asked him how he would feel uh, if he was a teammate uh, on that team. And he said he took it that that would show that the coach cares so much that the coach uh, is the type of guy that is in the trenches with the players. Uh, Would that be an accurate assessment of how it was received in your locker room? I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you know, what happened, that flag happened was, uh, was something that you know clearly affected the game, but at the same time, it's just that you know he's got as much passion and love for the game as we do, um, and you never you know you never try and uh, look back and you know try and harp on uh, the negative things that have happened in the game. I can only say you know had we had one more interception, one more turnover, one more sack, cause fumble, um, that's something that could have changed the game. We can't change anything but how we approach the game. Okay. Cameron Jordan of the uh, New Orleans Saints here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, Did Breeze bust out a Matumbo analogy based on the number of batted balls that you and the rest of the defensive line had? Did I hear that correctly? Uh, Possibly. I mean, uh, you know, when you talk about five passes deflected in the game, that's that's a pretty high number. Um, But one was not counted because of a two-point play. I just learned that. Okay. How's a two-point play not in fact, that's probably just as important or even more important than just a regular third down because points were on mine. So, so I guess greed is good when it comes to the number of batted balls that you're looking for here, right? Uh, you know, uh, I've, been, I've been throwing around uh, fun <laughs> terms, but I feel like I've cemented my status as a DB. But... <laughs> so are you a shutdown lineman? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> is that what you're uh, saying? You know, your, your words, not mine. I just feel like, you know, I should be uh, I, I should be able to walk between the three rooms in our meetings mm-hmm. just to pop in, you know? <laughs> How about this? Can I leave you with something uh, on this front? Uh, not to end our con- – we're not ending our conversation, but just while we're, we're having this conversation on this front. How about next time you bat one down, you do a Matumbo finger wave? 
What do you think? Right, right. Um, I'm really just going to be like, you know, next time a bat went down, I'm going to run over to Marshawn and be like, yeah, we, we get PBUs. Yes, <laughs> You could do that, too. And what has that young man uh, added to this defense, Cameron uh, Lattimore? I mean, he, yeah, I would say his, his tenacity to take the field. I mean, the way his prowess of how he uh, attacks different wide receivers. I mean, the Jets had a pretty decent wide receiver, I think, in, uh, you know, the number 11. Um, but, you know, in terms of what Marshawn was able to do, completely shut that kid out of the game. Um, and that's special. I mean, when you're able to put him on a, a quote unquote number one receiver um, and know that, you know, that's going to be a bad day for him, that's that's exactly what you need as a defensive line. Now, I wish, you know, that would have in turn made Petty pump, pump fake at least once. You figure, you know, four or five better balls down, um, you, you, you'd make him pump fake once or twice, you know, mm-hmm. really sit in that pocket, but he didn't. Okay. And, you know, that, you know. That's something that we have to make Matt Ryan do. Sure. And it's, again, a big game here um, uh, for Week 16. Uh, Before uh, uh, you go and uh, look at more film on the Falcons, uh, what did you think of the end of the Steelers and Patriots game, the way that all played out? I don't know. Is the Patriots doing Patriots-like thing? I have no idea. Apparently my football knowledge is not up to par because I thought it was, you know, Whatever I thought, uh, clearly, you know, the refs thought differently. Um, so instead of, you know, falling into this whole conversation of what's a catch, what's not a catch, I thought Mike Thomas had, you know, a, a good catch at the end of the end zone. Right. But we didn't catch that call. You know, the year previous, that's pretty much what sealed away a Carolina, Carolina Saints game over at Carolina the year before. But, again, it's. Uh, it's a fickle matter where involving the the, uh, the zebra strikes. Would you have a problem if the rule was changed that a, uh, uh, a receiver leaping for the end zone in the process of making a catch that that if if it's if if the ball is knocked out after crossing the plane of the goal, it's still a touchdown? Would you, as a defender, have a problem with that? Uh, yeah, for sure. You, you would. Okay. Okay. All right, so before I let you go here, Cameron, uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year Award nominee for your team, uh, how could people get involved with your charity work in uh, in New Orleans and one of the reasons why you are nominated for this prestigious award? See, that is a broader question, and I've just, uh, I've just stepped up to the challenge. In, my, in all my you know, years of being a part of the Saints and all my years of, uh, of trying to put this endeavor of putting love into the community and, and trying to inspire, you know, the next generation to not only go up and be better than, you know, better athletes, but better students, better uh, people. You know, I've never looked for a charity too badly, which I've always used different avenues, you know, whether that be United Way, whether that be Playworks, Play 60, uh, whether that be uh, the local uh, restaurants, you know, I use them through literacy visits. Um, I've never once been like, hey, I want to be the face of something. Um, but if that's what it, it takes, if that's what I can do to expand my outreach, that's, uh, that's really what this multi page Man of the Year uh, has brought to my attention is I can do so much more than what I am doing. Well, uh, good luck uh, against the um, Falcons and and good luck in the, uh, in the award. Perhaps uh, you could be one of those fortunate ones to pick up the award in your uniform on the field of the Super Bowl that you're playing. It's very, very rare to have that. So I hope that's what, uh, if that's what you wish for, that's what you get, Cameron. Oh, yeah. Thanks for calling. Much appreciated. You're a blessing. Always. At Cam Jordan 94 of the New Orleans Saints in a huge week taking on the Falcons here on the Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.